think you'll ever bench press 300 pounds? No. Why are you having that self-limiting thoughts? I don't... I, I just thought we were building confidence. Confidence and knowing the difference between, like... No. Overconfidence and nope. reality. No. Nope. Reality is different. I don't believe in reality. So you think one day I'll bench 300 pounds? One day I'm going to fly. Okay. Well, then, we d- we're not on the same page. <laughs> I think one day you could bench 300 pounds. I don't think what, so. What What's your current best bench like? In, in, tr- in training, it's 195 and a meet 187. Mm, underperformed, huh? Yeah, I always <laughs> do. My bench always like... I'm just kidding, it's four pounds. So, yeah. No, so, it's great. So what number are you comfortable with saying you think you'll bench that? What's in your Sunday? bones? I know I can pull 800 pounds. I don't know if I will, but I know it's in my bones. Um, 190. Really? Yeah. What the fuck did you just say? It's hard right now because I'm so far off from... I'm talking like 30-year-old Avi, who's been smashing weights for the next seven years. Oh, you're talking about like... Yeah, I don't think you're going to go out here and bench 300 pounds. No, I know. I just didn't know what the question was. Well, it wasn't a question. You know, it was just a little toss around to open up the silly podcast that people are listening to. Welcome to 50% Facts. We're here with Avi again. Welcome, Avi. I think you can bench 300 pounds. Maybe. I think I'll cap at like... 245. I think you got 275. Thanks for believing in me. I do. Yeah. I just, I've always had a, people always ask me what my goals are, and I think I just set them a little lower than what people expect. You have low expectations. I do. I have high expectations. That's like uh, the meet. Everyone's like asking, like, dude, great turnout. Are you stoked or how'd it go? And I'm like, I don't fucking know, bro. Because I, it, cause it, cause I, I, I live on like really high highs and really low lows. I live like an addict. Luckily, I'm not addicted to anything. Yeah, you did talk about how, I mean, people are asking you, like, how's the meat going? How's it turning yeah, out? Yeah, I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't have an answer for that. What am I supposed to say? Yeah, I fucking kill that. No, what I don't, want me to say? I don't have that level of enthusiasm about pretty much anything. I said no. it went well. Yeah. It went well, and, you know, we we cleared a little bit of cash. That was, yeah, that's, I don't know what, that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah, Bart people, kept asking. People seem to have a good time. That's, that's what I told Bart. I said, if no one gets injured and everyone else has a dope time, I'm in. Everything went smoothly. Do you think it went good? I do think it went well. Yeah. yeah. No complaints? You didn't hear nobody talking shit? No. Everyone seemed okay. No complaints. Um, we were able to, you know, food, drinks, and all that. Yeah. Warm-up room seemed fine. No one got hurt. People did well. Yeah. Yeah. Our lifters. equipment's fine. Everyone, people met Bart. They're happy with that. That's all they came for, dude. They don't even yeah. care about us. People met Avi. I saw you take a picture. Yeah. One picture, and I signed a belt. That was cool. An autograph? Mm-hmm. First, first, what, three months in this thing and you're signing autographs? Yeah. took me a year to sign some shit. It's my third belt. That's pretty I'm good. <laughs> Kyle said he got recognized from YouTube for the first time. Oh. Huh? There we go. Nice. Yeah. That stuff kind of makes me happy. Yeah, we're growing. Because Kyle was driving me home and he said, he's like, yeah, some dude knew me from the YouTube videos for the first time. I was like, dude, that's kind of funny. Yeah, they like him. No, he's great. He has fans. Yeah, he's funny. He has fans for sure. Yeah. That's what YouTube's really about. And that's kind of what uh, I told Seabass and he was filming uh, the vlogs coming out. But it, he... Uh, I say it's cool when you show a bunch of different lifters in the camaraderie. Like, it doesn't really matter if they're deadlifting 800 pounds. But, like, you see how many different people do this shit, like, size-wise, weight-wise, age-wise, mm-hmm. obviously ethnicities. We talked about uh, in an episode coming up Friday. But, like, just just someone you can relate to. Yeah. Right? Like, a bunch of people that are 33, yeah, they maybe want to watch you lift because you're fucking really strong and really technical and really smart in lifting. But they're like, well, I, you know, she's a fucking 100-pound chick and I'm a 34-year-old fat Italian guy. What do I really have in common, you know? And then they see you. And they're like, there's another fat Italian guy. Let me watch him. <laughs> or the opposite, yeah. though. There's probably a bunch of people that aren't very tall and aren't very big. And they're like, oh, my God. I'm built just like Abby. And look look how impressive her hard work has turned into strength. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And same with Kyle. Kyle's, like, uh, Kyle's fucking 6'5". He's mm-hmm. like the opposite of what you think a powerlifter would look like. But dude's still out here deadlifting squatting every day. Mm-hmm. You know? He's getting after it to the best he can. Yeah, and he doesn't exactly label himself as a powerlifter, no, but for he sure still not. trains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes hard and he does his shit. Yeah, some people like kind of are afraid of being. Well, I'm not a powerlifter, so I don't use yeah. a belt, use sleeves. I don't train at a powerlifting gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get kind of scared. I'm like, if we are lifting to also get strong, you're, you know, we are, yeah. we're, we all have the same goal. Or even aesthetics, like it's not as yeah. different as you think. Mm-hmm. You know, and everyone like tries to like separate shit. Yeah. Like, dude, you're using like resistance. To move your body through some shit for some kind of goal. Mm-hmm. We're all going to end up in the same place. Yeah. yeah, our gym's probably less than 50% competitive powerlifters, right? Oh, for sure. Without a doubt. I had this conversation with um, my neighbor across the street yesterday. He's like, who... We were talking about classes, and he's like, who, who who's taking classes? 
It's like people who want a power lift. I said, no, people who want, generally, people who are willing to use powerlifting to have strength for their lives. Mm-hmm. And there are some people who may go on to compete in powerlifting and others who have no interest in it at all. Yeah. And that's reflective somewhat of the membership, except I think that, that the people who take classes want structure. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. don't want to think. They want to be they want to have the experience structured for them. They're willing to do whatever, but they just they want structure. Yeah, that's what one of them um her name's Jenny. She started my class last week and she says she's already feeling better, like training and getting stronger. She says she always wanted to get stronger but never had um didn't know how to go about it and she does yoga and stuff, but she doesn't know how to do strength training and she said, "I know I need to get stronger." To just be better overall but i just don't know i need i need someone to tell me how to do it yeah you know? yeah some people don't have the energy or time or even want to like to do all the research some people do like like our member morgan who crushed it as meat yesterday like that dude's probably watching youtube all day learning mm-hmm. he's like a little powerlifting nerd so he's learning and that's what i that's how i started yeah. i just watched and listened and i would just scroll instagram and watch people's lifts for hours and and coach them in my head i literally took notes yeah yeah and, right and then like kept them on my phone and then during training i would like look at all these lists of cues to yeah. try to focus on. Yeah, but not everybody's like that. Some right. people are like I don't want to. Uh, like I'm busy with work. I have kids, or I, I I have other things I like. I like to paint, and I like to make I don't know fucking honey. So their research goes there. I just want to show up here and you do it. That's how I am with other shit. Like mm-hmm. I don't I I like cars a lot, and I used to work on my car and stuff. But nowadays, dude, I just want to bring it to the fucking mechanic and fix my shit. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what classes are. You yeah. know, like show up and just listen to Avi. Have the confidence in the person that you're going to mm-hmm. and just let them fucking guide you. You just yeah. do the work. It's, it's easy. It's my job. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do all the thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they, they get the benefit of the the empowerment that comes from feeling stronger. Yeah. And you know? then they meet other people who are in the same boat as them too. 100%. So then yeah. they have that community. And um, whereas when they come in by themselves, everyone already knows what they're doing. And so they might feel scared like yeah. oh they have this community and i'm just yeah. someone who's learning one one cool thing about like powerlifters, even at like your level right like top pro level is that um everyone has a coach mm-hmm. where like other hobbies and stuff i feel like you start to get pretentious when you start to get to another level and i'm using like car as another thing but i'm sure there's some mechanics that are like i know everything they're not gonna ask a mechanic a buddy for help but like even the best powerlifter in the world has a coach right right yeah like it's just so normal and then, like, not that their knowledge is necessarily that much beyond yours. Like, if I competed again, I'd get a coach. Mm-hmm. And not to say that, like, I'm the best coach ever, but, like, Joe, mm-hmm. uh, y- your other boss and our buddy, game day, like, I've been doing it longer than Joe. I think Joe's one of the best coaches in the world. I think I'm a really great coach. But if I was to compete, I'd still go to Joe. Yeah. Like, hey, man, coach me. I don't want to think no more. Like, let's ride. You got to turn, like, your athlete brain on, mm-hmm. you know? It's Where different. Yeah, in other sports, you don't do that. Yeah. Coaching or other or the hobbies. Coaching yourself is hard. No, it's really hard. It's really hard. Yes, it's just a confidence thing. Like, all right, Joe has the best, like, uh, perspective on what I'm going to do, and I'm going to allow him to take the reins and run, yeah. rather than I'm going to be, like, an emotional thought or overanalyze my own shit. Like, all right, I'm just going to follow Joe. And so I think that gives confidence, too, that, like, everybody can be coached forever. So even in your classes or someone that's never deadlifted before, but then there's probably someone in your class that deadlifts pretty decent. Yeah. Right? So there's, like, like a scale to it all. That's also what I tell people um, when I used to do more one-on-ones. I would... I would write a program for them and then I show them like, see, this is what my program looks like. It's basically identical. I have my own coach. Yeah. So I learn from him and I, I give this to you guys because this is also what I believe will help you. Yeah. It's like a stepping stone to Mm -hmm. the next level. So they don't think I'm just like bullshitting them. Like, nope, this is exactly similar, similar to what I follow. Yeah. 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 Yeah, It's not just made up. It's how I get stronger. It's also how I'm going to have you get stronger. Yeah. We're different, but we're not that different. Mm -hmm. So what about benching, dude? You hitting bench depth? I don't know, actually. I don't record from that angle, but now I'm curious. I'm going to test it out today. They have your bench depth there? Huh? Are they calling it bench depth, or is that a joke? I think, That's yeah. a joke, I think. It's got to be something, elbow yeah. depth? No, elbow depth, bench, yeah. Everyone's, I think it's elbow depth. talking about it. Everyone's making memes about it in the USAPL. Is anyone stoked on it? Have you read anyone? No. So everyone that doesn't know the IPF, strictly the IPF, but that probably means the IPF... Uh, affiliates, so what, like the CPU is the only big one I know. Um, and Powerlifting America, which Powerlifting we America. have no idea how many people are involved in that. But um, Now has, and it's been in the discussions, right, like um, to take away the big arch and wide grip bench, which is highly technical, and some may say is like the sumo version of a, of, of a, of, of a bench, um, where the range of motion is highly cut. How do we judge that or make it more fair? I always bring up the stupid thing of... Uh, 
that like short story gym, and I don't know if we've ever came up with an answer where it's like a utopian world and they make everyone even. So like if you're smart, they like electrocute your brain so you can't think straight. Oh, I don't know this one. Uh, Harris and Bergeron. Harris and Bergeron. Yeah. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And if you're like one. really strong, they'll clamp weights to your arms to make us all like the same, right? It's it's like this brain, uh, you know, thought process of a of a short story just to make you think about utopia and like. Oh, it's a short story? Yeah. Yeah, I read it in school one time or probably read the Cliff Notes or some bullshit. So what's bullshit. the moral of the story? We're like, the, the key of the story is that, like, to make everybody even, right? To, like, not allow anyone to have advantages. So it's ultimate socialist. Yeah, but, like, so beyond because it's, like, physical. physical. Yeah, yeah, not just, and like, financial where most yeah. social yeah. things. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, yeah like, like, to play basketball, that would mean, like, the league, and they do have some of this recreationally, where, like, you can't be over six foot. They have like six foot and under leagues, Jeez. right? It would be like, yeah, like in the NBA, LeBron James would have to wear a, a, a weight vest because he's faster than everyone. What if you're already like handicapped in some way? So then everyone else gets lowered down to, you know, they even it all out. Yeah, like if you're extra short and you want to play basketball, then yeah, LeBron has to play on his knees or some shit. You know, that's the gist of it. Jeez. Yeah. Hmm. So right. my point is, yes, like, is that where powerlifting is going? Like, why are we taking away people's individual advantages where an individual advantage is what makes sports special? That's what makes a champion a champion. That's what makes it competitive. You take you take LeBron James speed and jumping away. Yeah, sure. He's the same as Silent Mike on the basketball court. Yeah. But that no one wants to watch me. We want to watch the best do the best. Yeah. For it's kind of like with femurs, right? And squatting. Yeah. yeah. It's like harder when you're, you're long. Femurs. Yeah. So are we going to say like, yeah, like, sh- 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 the, like we're going to have a short femur league. Yeah, or like Only they take str- a different type of depth. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't I don't know. Yeah, one hundred percent. Makes it's it more complicated now that they made it an official rule. Yeah. yeah. At first, I just thought they were toying with the idea. No, no, no. Yeah, it, it was like coming. It was yeah. coming for sure. I, I think didn't expect that. The the you know that one argument that I guess I understand, although if you want this to be a sport, I don't understand it. But if you want it to be um, a contest, yeah, and a contest, a, a sport can be a contest. But there can also be a contest that's not a sport. If you want it to be that, people are talking about they want to see the strongest person because it's power. Okay, mm-hmm. I get that. Technically right? strength. Right? Yeah, but yeah. okay, dude. I we're just, not in fucking uh, physics. I know, but... Uh, just... Yeah, I get it, cut. <laughs> Saying a textbook. So, yeah, so if it, I get that argument, right? You yeah. want to see who can fucking run the fastest? We're not going to do treadmills and shit. We're just yeah. going to have a race. That's why running is the coolest or like most ancient coolest sport, right? Who can jump the fucking highest? Who can jump the fucking highest? Yeah. All right. That's black and white. So I get that argument. But if you want this to be a sport, there's always going to be skill involved. Yeah. So why are we just going to try to take out the individuality and the skill of this? Yeah. We're going to take a very quick break here. uh, And when we come back, we're all going to be the same. Man, do I feel different. (laughs) I, well, I, I didn't say we're going to be the same as each other. We're all oh. the same as we were before the break. No, no, no. I changed. Okay. I grew. Jeez. Oh, Evolved. Enlightened. No, you got shorter. You're <laughs> short, size. dude. You can't make short jokes. Yeah. No, I'm saying you... You're 4'12". We're, we're even now, so now you're 4'12". I'm average, and you're fucking 4'12". <laughs> so it's either I'm taller now, or you're shorter. No. I thought that's how it worked. No. I'm fucking average, and you're 4'12". I thought we're going to be the same now. No. Because you're not going to... You're going to bench 300 pounds. So with this elbow depth thing. When I think about this bench bullshit going on, and it's literally bullshit, I think that, and this is how I think about business. This is how I think about friendships. This is how I think about everything in life. And I'm not the guy. My high school coach, shout out Dean Stark, one of my biggest mentors in my life, and your uh, brother Tony. Yeah, the, the fucking, the Iron, fucking man. Iron Man. Uh, is that in the old saying that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And and Dean would always say, and it's good, but it's about context. He would say, if it ain't broke, fucking break it, put it back better. I was yeah. like, yeah, I yeah. like that. I do like that. But the issue here is we're not putting shit back better. We're just putting shit back different. And if you look at who's winning the IPF, who's winning USAPL, who's winning any bench press or the all-time world records, there's not a glaring, insane arch, ultra-wide grip class that's winning everything. And that's the same argument I make with sumo. sumo yeah. If every single weight class, every single record, and every single person winning all meets is only pulling sumo, then all right, maybe we could look at that. If you think it's an issue, if you don't want people to pull sumo, or if you think it's that much of an advantage over conventional. But that's just not the case with this bench press stuff. Like, the obvious case everyone's bringing out is Sean Noriega. Shout out to my boy. 
he's very technical, but the fuck are strong. Like, he's going to take dumbbells and throw them around, too. Like, he'll adjust to it. And I think him and Candido were the first ones um, to do this. And, and I, 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 re- I believe it was their original thought, and I, and I agree with him, and I want to give it credit if it is, is that if we're going to make these rules, let's do something that's uh, which steps into the next thing me and Avi talked about is the judging and the actual logistics of this new rule change. Why don't we just go weight class for weight class and choose a new legal grip width? So... 100 kilo and above, they get to go pointer on the ring. 175 kilo to 100 kilo, you got to, You get to go middle finger on the ring. But is that arbitrary? What finger? It's definitely it arbitrary, that? but at least it's standardized. I mean, this whole thing's arbitrary. Yeah. Right? F- for sure. It, it is arbitrary, but 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 it, it does make the adjustment. Because when you go into stuff like this, where the new rule is, for those that don't know, is your elbow the bottom of your elbow i believe has to cross the plane of the top of your shoulder shoulder joint yeah yeah but what is it yeah it says shoulder joint the fuck does that mean because like your ac joint Uh it switched uh your ac joint is covered up by your deltoids Mm -hmm. if you have deltoids if you have a significant or even a mini even your little 412 self your deltoids. I'm not 412, by the way. What are you, dude? 413? No, I'm like, yeah, 413. <laughs> your, your deltoid is going to cover up like your AC joint. So, like, what are we going to visually see? Plus, we're wearing t shirts, plus, we're wearing singlets, and plus, you're laying horizontally. And you have to pause. And the judge is judging movement <laughs> of the bar, pause of the bar, and up down. And if the other judges see your ass down or not. So, that's the logistics side. I don't know how you get so that's why the arbitrary f- ring finger or the r- makes way more sense. You can see when they unrack it as you give them a press command, you see where the fingers are. It's either a good lift or bad lift from there, right? And then you continue to lift. Where this other one, you're making three judgment calls all with the things on the on on your chest. The other big thing is that you can't put your feet on the bench when you're setting up now. Yeah, I I I think that's just like a habit thing. Like I I do that when I'm powerlifting, but. Um, I don't think it's necessary at all. That's what I mean. People, I don't think people are bitching about that because they can figure a way around it. But, but, but you again, just walk your feet back, right? I mean, or, or, or you do the swing deal where you set your feet first and you're way above the bench, and then yeah. you pull yourself under. The I think it's a bigger deal that some people went heels to no to toe, benching. Yeah. The USAPL changed that, right? Or yeah. they're about to. You can go on your toes now, right? Or oh, no? Oh, I don't know. Or maybe the IPF did. One of them, I think, changed that. I know the USAPL changed head movement. I think your head can come off the bench now. Yes. Um, I think those are all like, again, like they're not broke, so don't fix them, but like they're not fixing an issue that's not there. So I think that's why the US, USAPL went backwards. Like, okay, lifting your head's not going to allow you to bench a bunch more weight, so who cares? Let it rock. I, I don't think that there's any purpose to it other than trying to appease uh, over-prioritized internet voices. Just people bitching about it on the internet. Uh, in terms are, of making it allowed now? Yeah. Uh, no, no. In terms of the the uh, in terms of the um, the arching rule. The oh, because people are saying the shoulders. Back yeah, to the shoulders. shoulders uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but even that. No, I think their argument is that it will make it more spectator friendly and publicly understood because that is like a meme too, right? Like, who's really bitching about sumo? Weird tough guy powerlifters or the masses that don't understand. It's yeah. bodybuilders and and gym bros. They're the ones bitching about sumo. And it's also the same folks that are bitching about an arch in the bench. But, the, like, th- the other argument is that these weight classes that don't arch and and don't do what they're trying to fix are now going to be affected. If you have a big old titties, man or lady titties, or a big old belly, now my elbows literally can't pass the plane on my shoulder. Yeah. Just because I'm touching my bench. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to make me pull this thing into my fucking intestines just yeah. to get my elbows past a point? Like, big guys uh, and ladies w- will probably be negatively affected by this rule for no reason. Yeah, They could have pinkies on the... Even when I'm bigger, I was showing them, like, just messing around. Like, I'm only 200 pounds now, and, like, I could bench in a way right now, not crazy arch, no one would bitch about my arch, where my elbows don't pass my shoulders. Yeah. And my pinky could be on the ring. Yeah. Let alone when I was 230 pounds, like... It makes zero sense. People who can't floor press into a yeah, right. full range of motion because yeah, or you're pausing on your chest. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's gonna be. It's kind of weird there, and I don't know if they thought about that or not. But I think you're you're negatively impacting um, the heavier weight classes for absolutely no purpose. Right. Because typically, consider that. Yeah, yeah, typically those guys don't arch either, or they just not as flexible. Right. Yeah. That those weight classes. Um. What about sp- like major league sports that have had 
serious rule yeah. changes. That's the argument uh, Russ made to kind of in the beginning to uh, agree with this. Uh-huh. Is that like in basketball? Basketball is obviously just what I know best. Uh, yeah. But there, there's three huge ones they did. Like for a while, there's no three point line. Yeah, they had a three point line. Um, for a while, there's no three seconds in the key. For those that don't know, there's a, a block that's um, like 15 feet wide underneath the basketball and that's called the key underneath the hoop and big guys like will chamberlain and people just stand in there all day and dunk on you all day now uh-huh. you can only be in there for three seconds when you have the ball and et cetera, uh-huh. et cetera or don't have the ball because otherwise you're, it's like soccer or hockey yeah or like cherry picking yeah. kind of yeah and if you're the biggest baddest motherfucker they want to take that out for a while i think it was also will chamberlain they took away dunking you just weren't allowed to dunk <laughs> mm-hmm. um and so those are the ones that pop in my mind when it comes to this. Yeah. But those were an issue, an uh, arguable issue. Will Chamberlain was shitting on everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like he just threw a fucking grown man into a kindergarten. Like he was just yeah. dunking on it fucking all these six-foot dudes. And there, there's not really a dominant group of Again, I don't see an issue. that are there. Yeah, and baseball next year. Yeah, bigger there, plates or something? Uh, bigger plates, there's a reason for bigger plates that makes a lot of sense. It has to do with the evolution. It's an old sport. Yeah. So it's, it's evolved over time. And the um, the dynamics, or the, what, what I'm trying to say, what uh, the, the dimensions of the uh, baseball field have changed over time, and they're not actually what they're supposed to be. They, it's supposed to be, you know, 60 feet, 6 inches from the from the mound to the plate, and then it's it's... 90 from base to base is it larger now except that no it's gotten smaller and it's closer on one side than the other because from of like the, second or third because of the size of the base so they increased the size of the base to equalize yeah. all that stuff but that might uh, affect like tag outs or like f- fucking stealing bases yeah, it, and stuff, it, right? it may or may not yeah. have any effect yeah. it, it possibly will like probably um stolen bases yeah theoretically will go up uh, another thing that's happened in the last few years in baseball is what they call the shift or the overshift, where if you know where a hitter is likely to hit the ball based on having all their statistics, mm-hmm. you will shift your infield toward and maybe your outfield toward that yeah. that area, that zone. Well, you're not going to be allowed to do that as extreme in any as extreme way. Where they're going to have like a left field has a, a certain <clears throat> zone that they can't pass? Yeah. No, we're not. It's more the infield, but yeah. Yeah, interesting. Uh, See, I don't love that. I don't because yeah. like there's like that's just part of the strategy to me. I agree. Yeah, well, I don't know baseball too much, but I know uh, baseball sh- medium. But see, it comes back to the enjoyment of the game. I would rather they not because the the game moves faster and is more interesting if right. if people actually fucking get hits. Yeah, if you get to catch a ball. Yeah, <laughs> or or make a or, play. Or yeah, or get on base. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, I know they added the the pitch counter too, and I know people yeah, are mad count. about that a little bit. Um, or like, a, but but that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I saw that in 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 minor league. They've been running it yeah. this year. Well, there's a shot clock in basketball is another big it change. It doesn't make that much difference. Right. People need to get over it. It's that like powerlifting, one. right? Like, we're yeah. giving you two minutes. That's plenty figured out. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I don't think it's a huge deal. And people just don't like change. And especially yeah. with baseball, I feel like, because it is like the sport of tradition, mm-hmm. right? And so everyone's like just anti tradition yeah, but, but or they anti. Did, they broke the biggest tradition uh, uh, ever by taking away steroids. The only <laughs> thing that mattered in baseball. No. Bastards. Uh, that too, but no uni- <laughs> universal designated hitter. Pitchers don't yeah. hit anymore in the National League, yeah. which is weird. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I, I think it's all a balance of tradition and, and, and it makes more sense when you're talking about baseball, basketball, football because money is the driver. Yeah. Right? So you got to do it for the viewers. You got to do it for the score. You got to do it for the audience. You yeah. have to do it. And I agree with that. Um, powerlifting you know, what are we doing? Like, money ain't driving these decisions. No. It's not, it, despite what they think, and we had a long chat with Garrett Fear about it, and he's much more hopeful than I of the growth of powerlifting into a broad audience. Yeah. Um, these aren't going to make my mom want to watch a bench bridge comp. My mom's not saying, wow, I'd really get into that powerlifting thing, but that arch, I just don't get it. That's not fucking happening. But what no. is she, I mean, she's not watching other sports either, right? No, she loves soccer. My okay. point is that the, the, they're making this argument change because mm-hmm. they think it'll bring more people to watch the sport. That they don't watch it because that arch is cheating. That's why they're uh, that's why they're doing it. Oh, uh, I see. Because they think the rest of the world, non-powerlifters, will now understand it better. Yeah. Right. That's because sad. the gym bros at Twenty Four Hour Fitness or your Crunch Fitness mm-hmm. or your Anytime Fitness are think that is dumb. And now when you pull conventional and you bench flat back, now I think you're strong and cool. And all of a sudden, I want to powerlift. That's not going to happen. 
There's no influx happening to the IPF because of this. No. And there's no influx in audience. There's It's not more welcoming. And it, it gives USAPL more of a differentiator to... Yeah. To, yeah. To Again, it actually just segments the sport more. Yeah. Like, if, if you're like that arch... needed more of that. Yeah, if you're that archy kid, you're like, well, fuck that, I'm going to the USPA. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's just dumb. We should... We should there should be more legitimate reasons why we choose a federation than avoiding a rule. Yeah, or a, or that I love a deadlift bar. Yeah, but a lot of it is you know personalities and avoiding rules. That's, yeah, yeah, it's know. culture. Which the culture part I like. Yeah, and I was talking about Martin. Who, you know, shout out to Martin again from uh, uh, Iron Valley. Iron Valley. Uh, he runs the USPA meets with us, and and he um, and I was telling him I was like, dude, that, that you know we want to run a, a bunch of different meets here because the, each federation has its own culture, and I think that's cool. Or the yeah. followers of the federation made the culture. I, yeah, yeah. I don't want to give too much credit to the federations, to be honest, even though. They're both been cool to us, and but the truth is that the people make the culture. Yeah, right. The you, you, uh, the driver of the culture is not the federations, but the culture itself found these federations, uh, uh, made the home there. Yeah, and I want to cater it all, or we want to cater it all. We want to make friends to all of them, and I think that part's fucking cool. Not because one's drug tested or not, not because a deadlift bar or not. You know, it's the culture and the people. It did feel like a different community. It is. Yeah, you probably have never been around that. No. Yeah. I've only been in. I've I've only competed USAPL. Yeah. How long have you been uh, dipping drug tests? Four years now. You've passed them. Yes. Dude, four you years. got a hell of a chemist. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, you you want me to do USPA? So I don't know what that means. That means that your chemist gets to take a week off at work. <laughs> he doesn't have to make you pass the test. No. Well, we're actually talking about doing USPA tested at some point in the future, too. Yeah, so. yeah. If we do a double weekend USPA, we'll just do both. So that's Yeah, you can just... get tested if you want and pass it and cheat. I have gotten tested. Your conscience should feel better doing untested. It'll have to be a, t- a tested one. All right. Yeah. Um, but since I've only been in USAPL and spectated only those meets, too. Yeah, and those are where your homies are. Yeah, it's like... It's not like at a USAPL meet, I know everyone there, but it did feel different. Yeah. I didn't really know any of the lifters unless they are Third Street members, um, but it, I don't know. It yeah. felt different. Yeah, it's it a culture. Weird. No, I, I think it's cool. Yeah. It's like. Because it's not like good or bad and you can't like point your finger at it. Like this is the culture difference, but there is a vibe and I like both yeah. of them and I think everyone should lift everywhere. I was actually telling uh, Martin, I think beginners probably feel more at home in the USPA. Mm, why is that? I, I think because the USAPL is known for like being strict on a lot of shit, and that's mm. extra intimidating. It's already intimidating to throw your hat in, and so I think the USPA, like if you just are like, oh, I kind of want to powerlift, I don't know what's going on. You just hop into a USPA meet and you just fucking who gives a shit. Yeah. USAPL is more, is it more competitive? I think it's like yeah, it's more like already uh, the the lane's a little smaller, which isn't bad either because that's good because now everyone's fucking forms really good and they're all wearing SPD and they're you know what I mean. It's just more uniform, which mm-hmm. isn't a bad thing either. It's just different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's no bad or good. It's just different, which I think is beautiful. And that's why we're, you know, throwing our, our ring on both. Mm-hmm. So USPA meet another one next year? Probably. No official announcement, but we'll probably, you know, as of right now, we haven't even, we just spitballed. We haven't met, met, but yeah, probably two to four meets a year. One, one USPA, one one or two, one or two USAPL. Yeah. 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 Bl- block them out in the quarters. I mean, there's a demand for it. People want to compete and they want to build community. And like what we talked about in the other episode about how powerlifting is is all about the community and religion and all that stuff. I think, I think, you know, we need to be a hub for that because it's not in the world. Let alone the pandemic. Let alone how the chaos of just our world mm-hmm. and politics and everything aside. Like, there's no community in this spot. So, if we can do our part and and, and help that, I, I think it's it's a, a duty of ours. Talking about where where my morals stand, you know, I think that's if you're capable of helping someone, you need to help someone. Talking about yeah. me being raised Catholic and stuff like that's some of that. Like, if I'm if I have if I have two loaves of bread and you're hungry, I got to give you a loaf of bread. That's just how it goes. There's no if ands or buts. And so I think you know we have a beautiful building. We have a beautiful community. We're starting to build a dope team with you and Seabass and Kyle. We got the manpower. We got the homies that want to help. Um, and now we have the resources with the USA, USAPL and the USBA. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. kind of like our duty, responsibility. With great responsibility comes great power. Uncle Ben. The other way around. The other way. <laughs> With bad responsibility, you become very strong and do steroids. <laughs> Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben also makes uh, salad dressing? Uh, rice. Bastard. Yeah. Carbs. <laughs> Bastard made me fat. Feed the community. Yeah. Yeah. With great responsibility comes great microwavable rice. Great. Uncle Ben. Quote, unquote. Uncle R.I.P. Bad. Uncle Ben. <laughs> Uncle Ben. <laughs> R.I.P., dude. Uncle Carby. <laughs> uh, great power. Great responsibility. Spider-Man, you son of a bitch. Yeah, there we go. 
There's like seven versions of Spider-Man now. I can't keep. Did that. you watch the new one? Your brain was probably fried. I did. I think. That I don't that thing's still like to buy. Fuck you, Sony. What now? I think you got to rent that stupid thing. Oh. Because everyone owns it, so they're still just milking the money. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's but true. But Thor came out and fucking free like two weeks after it went into theaters. <laughs> Poor guy. Well, it's it's because that one's Marvel. Like, purely Marvel. Yeah, that's what I mean. The other one's just monetized it's, by 20 people. It's Marvel and Sony. Yeah. yeah. Bastards. Yeah. And I, I don't know. And I, I use your camera, Sony. You know? Can you just fucking take care of me? I, I like the last the one, though. They don't give a fuck about us. You did like it? Ah, yeah, I liked absolutely. it. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. And I liked uh, um, Spider-Verse, and Spider-Verse 2 is coming. Yeah, so. Spider-Verse is insane. Yeah. Spider-Verse, uh, the soundtrack, I think it's uh, Sway Lee and, like, uh, Post Malone. Mm-hmm. And we're in the car in, in Vegas, and we put on uh, Taika's playlist. He has his oh. own music playlist, and it's that Sunflower. song. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just play it. <laughs> he, just, he just fucking automatically starts smiling and bobbing his head. Yeah. yeah so cute. Like Keep it all day. Uh, boo, boo, yeah, he does not know fuck. the lyrics No, he's just jamming, though. Yeah, it's awesome. It is a good fucking movie. If you guys haven't seen Spider-Verse, shout out to my boy uh, Tony Serrano, who did a lot of the art direction on that thing. Uh, maybe he was even main art director, but uh, fucking visually dope as shit. Culturally mm-hmm. dope as shit. I know it won Grammys and stuff, but I still think it's kind of underrated because it's animated, you know? Yeah. Like, the big Marvel heads probably didn't dig in. Or, like, not the big Marvel. The big Marvel heads dug in. The the, the, the world didn't dig in. The world will go watch fucking Thor because yeah. they just know it's a thing, but they probably didn't. The masses. And it's so good. Music's good. Story's good. Yeah, the Thor. Have you seen the most recent Thor? I just started watching, like, a little bit of it, but it was just, like, in the background, you know? But that fool is fucking... Trenny, huh? Yeah. Oh my god, the most recent one. He his gets, arms look he's stupid. He's naked in the. Okay, yeah. dude. From, yeah, they just took all his clothes off. From yeah. Fan. And that's now your it. new favorite yeah, movie. I know or what? It. No. Yeah. Like my friend and I, we watched it and we were just like analyzing like the delts and pecs and the proportion. And what everything. were you analyzing, you no, just sicko? Like, as like a bodybuilder with like the because the, the general population just like oh my god muscles. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? But we we're like. Dude, he's definitely, like, on some shit. Yeah, shit ton <laughs> of shit. I think he's been on, and then this one, he's straight fucking... He probably... At first, he's just doing some tests or something. He just throw down on this one. Yeah. Probably weighed, like, 240. Dude was fucking huge. He mm. was, yeah. He was super huge. Natty well, or not? Nah? No. Definitely not. Definitely. And he's not going to say that, but, like, you know, Which whatever. is fine, like, whatever. But just don't say you're Natty. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, don't think he just did. Just be, be silent on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but he was fucking. His arms look insane, and part of it too, though. I mean, you look bigger on camera, period. So, you, but you have to be leaner because yeah. you look yeah. fat, like in a but, moment. But with him, you have him to compare to other movies. It's, funny. it's yeah. not like we're comparing. Yeah, him well, uh, Hugh Jackman, same thing with yeah. with Wolverine. But he's just shredded. He was, yeah, he was he was soft yeah. in the the, yeah. the first time he played. And then I think Wolverine. he was one sixty five in the other one, though. Yeah, that's the difference. And by the by the last time that he was yeah. Wolverine, he was. It, just yak. They look like those invisible frogs or whatever. Not <laughs> invisible. You know what I'm talking about? They got like see through skin. You see yeah. their heart pumping. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. He was yeah. so lean when he comes out of that little fucking cold plunge tube. It's funny because, like, as we're watching, as I'm watching it now, I'm like, they definitely got a pump before this scene. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're probably injecting them with shit and fucking <laughs> yeah. salt fucking injections, like insulin, holding, like, who knows what. Yeah. Glycerin. Some curls in between. I think, there's a, I think there's a Photoshop thing where he is holding like heavy bags and they Photoshop the bags out. Because, you know, you look, like, mm. way more jacked oh. when you're having shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think I've seen something like that where he's, like, carrying some shit and they just Photoshop it out. And that he, makes sense. Yeah. It does. Yeah. The tricks of the trade, dude. That's mm-hmm. what you do with all your picks. No, that's you. I wish. You and your glycerol and your creatine. All right, dude. You don't got to give him my whole stack. <laughs> <laughs> secret stack. Your but- Cialis. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked. She's yeah. reading, like, a bodybuilder's thing the other day at the front desk. She's like, yeah, Cialis. No, my friend. Oh, dude, you're putting him on blast in front of millions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say who it is, and he's not going to listen to this. Oh, that's fucked. I Maybe he's, he's a huge fan. Funny. No, there's no way. Yeah, just pop he's and a, Cialis. He's a bodybuilder, not a pie lifter. Uh, yeah, was he a porn star? He doesn't need to be taking Cialis. No, this, it's very common, though. No, I know. That's why I told her. The vascularity. That's the whole... I had no idea. He mentioned it to me, but, like, the whole weird part of it yeah but uh um, what's the weird part of it the weird part of it is you're wearing a handkerchief on your dick and <laughs> oh, <laughs> a male. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i didn't know well, he mentioned like it's for a freaking like a boner thingy yeah yeah and then um, a boner thingy i don't know what to call it a male erection pill. oh yeah yeah and then uh i thought he was just it was like he was joking oh yeah but then oh, you no. was like no you said oh, yeah it's weird. And it is common it is common in the gym mm-hmm. culture and bodybuilding culture but it makes sense if it's like it does just increases your yeah like, vasoconstriction yeah, if you're watching something. fucking porn in the gym yeah it's gonna go somewhere but if you're just doing bicep curls you'll probably be all right it's gonna go to your biceps you would hope so yeah 
I'm what do sense. I know? You would think. What do you know? I don't know. I'm a natty. You take it. No, I don't take it. Now you're starting rumors, dude. Yeah. Isn't that what you do on this podcast? <laughs> no, no. I'm just telling them about your chemist. I'm just telling them truth. Fifty percent facts. Yeah. They can pick and choose. I'm the for fifty percent truth, and you're the fifty percent liar. O- only half of anything that we say is p- potentially provably true. So, to put a cap on the, on this discussion about the about the IPF and the bench press, yeah. is this going to have an impact on the number of people who watch? IPF. No, like positive or negative? Yeah. No, I think it would be the same. I think, if anything, there's a slight negative of people not wanting to compete there. I think, the viewers, yeah, I think the viewership will be the same, and I think the cultural shift will be the same. I yeah. think it actually, uh, yeah, talking net positive, net negative, it's it's not that – the idea is a huge net negative. The outcome is going to be very neutral. But, okay, we're talking about a group of people who are willing to compete in a federation where they have to get their underwear checked. Yeah, that's everywhere now. <laughs> no, that's everywhere. <laughs> It, 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 that never made any sense to me at all. Yeah, that's everywhere. Yeah, that's every fed. It is weird. Yeah, that's why I just wear a thong twenty four seven. Yeah, you go. I but you that's can't not though. Either. Oh really? Yeah, you yeah. can't wear a thong. Uh, that's it, that's weird. The judge it, let it, me do it. Maybe I looked so good. It, it the weigh ins. They just. It would absolutely not help you in any way, and you can't wear it. That like, I don't understand. There's stuff like that though, like, um, in other sports, you know, just like regulations for regulations. Like not positive, not negative. Like oh, socks in baseball. Yeah, uniform stuff. Yeah, your yeah. football. You, you football. used to be able to have to like cover your knees, but now you don't. Basketball you used to have to wear shoes that match your jersey. Now you don't. Yeah, just little shit. That's just pro stuff. All right, let's wrap this one up. <laughs> Where can people find you, dude? Uh, on Instagram, you find me at avi dot lu a v i dot l i e u. And Third Street Barbell taking one-on-one clients we have uh 6 a.m and 6 p.m classes. If you are local, you're trying to get stronger, trying to get more fit, feel better. Um, all levels uh, allowed from never touched a barbell or stepped into a gym to competing on the world stage. It doesn't really matter. Avi will help you out. Um, so check our website out for that, thirdstreetbarbell.com. Uh, I'm Sal Mike. If you want to find me, join our Discord, 50percentfacts.com, to find a link to that. And we'll catch you every uh, Wednesday, Friday. I am at the Jimmy D and all the social media this show. 50% Facts, where percent is a word, and 50 is just numbers. 50% Facts is a Spreaker Prime podcast in association with iHeartMedia on the Obscure Celebrity Network, which has grown. Check out uh, Stimmed Out with our friends Joe Stanek and Tim Thibodeau uh, on the network. Also, uh, the Hashtag Coffee Time podcast with Noah Kinsey. And we'll talk to you on Friday.